Welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset, Scotland's number one health, fitness and entertainment podcast. So in today's episode, one of the biggest frustrations we can face as fitness fanatics is convincing your partner, friend or family member to get into the gym. Today we cover off a couple of experiences that we've had when it comes to relationships and fitness journey and how to get your message across to your family members, partners, etc. Because saying it in the wrong way will absolutely put them off their fitness journey. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen, so we've got you covered in today's episode. And before we get into that, we've got a free plan that you should download and send to your partner or friend or family member. Uh, you can find that in the link below. And if you've also struggled with a sore back, there's also a free plan in the link in the description as well. And always make sure you, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment, what do you think of today's episode, and give us five star rating on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So if you want to save your relationship when it comes to fitness, let's get into it. <clears throat> so, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Right, what's happening? One of the biggest things that we communicate for health and fitness is relationships. So today's deep dive episode, how do you better relationships? Can't know, we're no therapists, we're not going down that <laughs> yeah. route. But one of the main constraints and frustrations, I thought this was only being a PT, but speaking to clients, it's the same with clients as well. Anyone on their health and fitness journey, the biggest frustrations is seeing your friends and family and partners no getting interested in their health and fitness, which is quite sad isn't it in a way because i i done that like done that video at half nine last night <laughs> did you see oh uh, yeah, i bit, woke up this I morning there, like that. i was just about to leave for the gym and i was like oh fuck no made the video so oh, i was like ah, boom 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 boom, boom. Bald, no i know i know can't get a bald, uh, eh? on a side note me and james have said that we'll shave our heads if we miss posting twice a day twice a day that's a big fucking commitment i said i was gonna sell my gym i don't know why i said that but <laughs> right, bald, baldy's probably better uh, it's a bit we can accept strategy. a baldy but i was saying that and, and i was thinking about it that it's completely normal to live an unhealthy lifestyle oh it's I so normalized it. and it's it's weird because in a way it's like when you're doing something for your health and fitness it's like oh, look at you why you, uh, you think you're better than all yours <laughs> and it, i i think that that will play into some of the things we end up talking about today but the hardest thing that I've struggled with and it's, it's it's convincing family to to work out. I spoke about like being up at family parties in the last couple of months and the last six months and hearing family members talk about how their back hurts and they're in so much pain and they just need to lose the weight and then end up doing Weight Watchers and they do X, Y, Z. And I'm sitting there like trying to bite my tongue because I, I know the answer, isn't it, for me to go, Fucking just listen to me, Bob, because there's no point shaming. You can't, you can't. Um, same with my 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 step grand, like she had to get a, a hip operation in the NHS. She was in excruciating pain, told her that it was three years, and so she had to go private, fifteen thousand odd pound that she ended up having the pain, and I'm like she was active, very active up when she's in her seventies. Very active at the for the age that she is, mm -hmm. line dance and all that sort of stuff, but one thing that's missing, and I strongly believe, is like an element of, of lifting weights to strength, strength, strength the, the muscles, particularly in women. Aye. Um, as they age, they can lose their, their muscle mass a lot quicker. Is it os osteoporosis? Osteoporosis. Yeah. Um, so the bones getting weaker and all that sort of things. And you can't reverse that, but you can fucking slow it down dramatically. By, well, like ice hormones, weights. when you get to 40, 50, 60, they're not going to, they don't get the menopause. So a woman will get the menopause, so their hormones will be fucked. Mm. So their muscle mass, but eyes are, even well, just it will, it, will decre it will decrepit a lot quicker than a man's because a man's testosterone just goes nice and slowly. A woman gets to a certain point in her life where her hormones go. Boop. I know it's like an it's it's what's referred to as the midlife crisis in a way, isn't it? It's <laughs> like the the crisis part. It's like oh, fuck, is this happening already? Some some women get it as early as thirty. I did. It's quite mad. Did so it's did just. Did. The, also the human body so complex in itself and hormones is a whole other topic but today's deep dive episode is gonna we're gonna share our experiences tips and tricks to convince your friend family member partner whoever it may be to get into that journey of health and fitness Hi. so you've had a really good experience with this with your dad Oh, I, I was. No, like, we're not talking about partners here. No, no, no. I, I was just. Uh, <laughs> You've had the worst experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, like, I'll go on it. I did say it in the last podcast, but I did. I, I don't aye, we, we were just talking about it yesterday, but it's worth that you're going into. Aye, aye. So that's when we I moved there here, and I could really start teaching people how to squat, bench, deadlift, really getting into my philosophy of training, like training people how I would want to train people. 
and uh, they were starting to love it and they were starting to get right into their health and fitness like more, they were eating better, they were moving more, they weren't just training in here more, they were doing everything more and in the space of five or six weeks, five or six people split up with their partners <laughs> and I was like, oh no, is this me? <laughs> my, but my they were all, they were, they were, it was all for the similar, very similar reasons. They were like, my partner doesn't like me go to the gym the same, I'm going here and all, like when you start training, when you start lifting, when you start eating more, moving more, you see how little other people move, you see how little motivation other people have, because it doesn't just give you strength gains, it gives you motivation gains, it gives you discipline gains, it gives you confidence gains, it gives you all these gains, and then you quickly see that other people in your life who are only doing that, they don't have it, they have it in them, mm. but they're not doing it, so they don't have it at that period of time, yeah. and then they're like, right, I'm feeling really good, so I'm going to, like, they'll, what, what is obviously we're going to get into later in the episode and when a lot of people their message their way of messaging it is terrible because they only have one way like they've been right I've done this you need to do this mm. which is a poor way to do it aye and I think we we are, we learn that from a humility standpoint aye aye being PTs they're just going we, in and going why the fuck you know doing aye. this and this is where us being younger PTs we would have that exact approach oh absolutely for, for clients like come on just fucking follow the plan aye, aye, but aye. when in reality like human behaviours can be so complex and there's yeah. ways that it's so individualised to, to each of the per uh, each person but yeah you know looking at them all it was like right what's happening and they're like they're just fucking they're not doing anything and like I, I, I just want to do stuff and they're no they're about to chill and I'm no and I'm like right that's up to you man but yeah. like it was all for the, it was all for the same reason their yeah. partner wasn't any fitness they were struggling in the relationship yeah. So I looked up some stats, which from a relationship point of view, like your your better half, 42% of marriages in the UK uh, end up in divorce. Now, that is obviously very complex. And I've got a couple of theories as to why, like, uh, that's higher in the, the United States as well. Right. Where, but it's, it's higher than 42%? Aye, it's, it's almost half. I think it's over half, actually. Right, it? The marriages end in divorce. And I think they've got more of a religious culture. So I think a lot of people get married, get married move in. And don't go through that first. And I, I honestly say, move in with somebody. In with somebody. So the, the the graduation of like relationship tears is like, you meet them, you see them more regularly on a weekly basis. You go on a two week holiday. Aye. But I've had to say, go on a long weekend break first, a week holiday, a two week holiday, then you move in because it's at each one of those stages you're still figuring out each other. You don't feel uh, they to this day. Like, they actually like this person. What did Jillian say on Sunday? She said something in here, and I was like, I didn't know that about you. And 11 years ago today, we went on our first date. That where it was? Uh, she just texted me this morning, 11 years ago, we went on our first date today. What did she, I don't know. She said, she, said, she said something, oh, it was Avon. She was like, I used oh, to I sell Avon. Aye, aye. And I was like, well, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> so you're <laughs> always constantly finding out. And I think to better relationship, working on your health and fitness isn't just going to solve it. So it's worth saying that as well. No, but, it's not going to solve it. But it certainly is going to through byproducts of working on your health and fitness and as long as you get too, don't get too obsessive over it because it can go the other way but you have more energy you're not going to be as cranky you're going to be more resilient so on and so forth but 42% of them man that's crazy and then there was another start here that out of people who don't uh, succeed with their health and fitness journey and this is an article as well so it's like fucking made up statistics at the end of the day but Bye, a majority of people who start the health and fitness journey that if their spouse or partner doesn't um doesn't join them in that process they're up to 80 percent more likely to fail or the mark or that then kind of fall into the statistic where they're in an, in a situation where Need you were course. you were saying where they end up breaking off breaking it off with their with a partner so quite challenging and quite i guess quite sad at the end of the day as well but at the same time, you're there is a change in your identity when you're working on your health. It's and a lifestyle change. It's it's no, it's you're, you don't just everybody gets this so rang. You don't just start going to the gym. You start doing everything mm -hmm. different. You start thinking different. You start sleeping different. And in the defence of <clears throat> the partner who gets broken up with because they're the other person's working on the health and fitness, it can be so extreme where they're like, nah. It needs to, we need to always eat like this. We can't have pizza. We can't do yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's where it can also be a wee bit toxic. Because mm -hmm. if I'm, if I'm like, for example, me and Jill, well, you said that actually the other day, like you get a, you get a Chinese. It's not that we're saying that these foods are bad. I'm dobbing you in here, right? It's fucking great. <laughs> no, but you, like for I majority. Got a I got a burger grill on Sunday as well. Yeah, I can get on board with that. I've had one of them a week. <laughs> I'm averaging one of them a week. I've got mac and cheese to mate. I thought it was a wee bit too sweet. 
Did you get the mac and cheese? Ah, uh, Jillian got it. I thought it was a wee bit too sweet, though. Quite a big portion. I, I liked the sweetness there. Did you? Ah, no, I felt like a wee bit too sicky. But anyway, so the it can be so extreme with this. It's like, no, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And there's a frame of the conversation, like you said, that it has to be approached. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it then for the, for this episode. So kind of starting at the, the bottom part, couples that live together, stay together. I like that. That was a wee heading on one of, one of the articles and cringy and all that sort of stuff. But it's true. It's true. And how you approach that can be quite it can be different from person to person, I guess. Aye, aye, I'd aye. imagine you would be the person that's like, come on, let's just fucking do this. Aye, I've, I've went fucking out, left heavy weight with me. <laughs> I've went out with one person, then I left. Like, boyfriend, girlfriend. and the Boyfriend? Uh, what? No, we're actually me? We're actual boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Is this a new fucking stint of your life? I know you had gay best friends, but I didn't know they were that close. <laughs> Mate, you got, to, you got to swing both ways to know if you like it. You know what I mean? That's You'll never know if you, you like know, it. Don't try it. Going off on a, a wee tangent here, um, one of my clients, he's, he's gay, and I was he was talking about that he'd slept with a girl when he was like 15, 16. Ah, yeah, and I was like, day. why? And he's like, I had to date just to make sure I was gay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I fucking love that. And he says his well, done it, no, but he says his man um hasn't slept with anyone. Right. So he's like, I always wind him up. I was like, they're I think they're in his thirties, right? He's like, How do you know you're gay? <laughs> 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 I love that banner, man. I think it's class. But anyway, sorry, sorry, as you were saying, boyfriend. Aye, but the f uh, aye, and it was it was just you quickly become to find that you need ah, like for for me obviously being right into it i'm like right into it but no i'm no like you need to do this you need to do that but it gets to the point where you go we don't actually have that much in common you want to do this i want to do that probably not going to work that's it that's really really important you read any james smith's books hey i've listened to some of them so th i think it's the second book or the first book i can't even remember the names of them but in one of his books he talks about this because as pts we so all not a diet book is the first one then it's how to not a life coach is the second one. I think it's life coach. Ah, yeah, life I, I've coach, so, to that one. So life coach, he, he, I don't know if you remember in that book, he talks about when you are working on your health and fitness journey, there's a, there's a crossroads that you come to if your partner's not in that. And you have to, doesn't matter how long you've been together, you have to sit down and have an open, honest conversation to the point where you say, look, I don't know if this is right to go forward. You're looking at my auntie. Hi, <laughs> hi, how have you seen that before? Have you ever seen this t-shirt? No, I was, I was trying to think I've seen it before, but I've not. This I'm, podcast I'm, is brought to you by ADHD, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. So I, I heard I'm, that I heard everything you're saying. I'm wearing a t-shirt just now that says Anti-Burpees Club. <laughs> Dylan from this band. They're actually quite good, what they're called, Social Social club. Social club. Shout right. out to social keep club. Keep going, keep going. I know I know but, uh, so you come at this crossroad and you, you, you're on a different path. And there's a choice to make, and it's not that your partner has to join you in that path, but if it's solely becoming your identity, it might not be the person that you originally started a relationship with, and you might not be that same individual as well, and that's no. a sign of growth, and and I've spoke about this before, sadly, as you're growing as an individual, you may get lucky and your partner comes along with you in that journey. Yeah, yeah. Or you might be, I don't even say lucky, you might be in with a... With the face with the decision that you both have to go your separate ways, doesn't have to be animosity or fucking a bad breakup, but it's a it's a fucking difficult but grown up thing to like come to the conclusion of. Like, look, if it's not if you're not wanting to join me in this, cool, Aye. it's what I'm going to be doing, mm -hmm. and I can't be like if the only time. This is the sad thing as well because I think about some no friend like when I was in Nottingham, I had some some other friends and they drank all the time, and I was like, if one of them ever. What? You turn that off now. Why are you cold? I'm fucking freezing. Freezing, are you? <laughs> it's belting right at me. I no, no, no. It's belting right at me. It's like again, that. right, fucking third, third interruption. Like <laughs> <laughs> See, you're trying to say you're stronger than me. You're so weak, boy, just because you can deadlift. Yeah, it's because I'm a low body fat and you're not. <laughs> wow. Is that where we're going? <laughs> so anyway, right, back to back to the, the story. So I knew one of the guys that I was working with, he's like, oh, I'd love to start getting into the gym and that, but they drank every every single night. Like yeah, they, every night? Uh, aye, they were, they were heavy drinkers, man. Fuck. And they were young. Aye. And I started thinking about that and I remember me and Jillian going, I couldn't do that all the time. And I was like, I'm glad, like we're not on aye. that same page. And then I was thinking if one of them do try to change and it's the only time they're connecting is around that drinking or the fucking takeaway that's on a Friday night, that's really where the tension comes from because yeah. as one person changes that and they're like look i'm not gonna do that it becomes like oh we've got nothing to talk about then or we've got nothing in common no no interests yeah I get, I get, 
Do you think you need to have common interests? Well, I that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Peter, comment. So I read, so I was reading a, a few Reddit things earlier. I put a couple of things into Google eh, about like fitness and relationships. And one of them was my partner's always been into fitness. Eh, and I've never really been into it, but I do my walk and eat well. Eh, but she said that they got on on a level, they connected through. And this is something else that's actually fantastic about this is what I wanted to speak about. I forgot to write it down when I was in the house. But uh, the emotional intelligence, uh, emotional, no, intelligence fitness. Mm-hmm. So reading books, learning, working, that's where they connected. Mm-hmm. And I think I fitness is fantastic, but I've seen people into fitness who are on the self-development. Mm-hmm. They've got one way of training and that's it. And they'll do that for 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. And they're one, they're, it's a one focus. But what like your clients and my clients are doing, they're self-developing. Mm-hmm. They're strength training for the tools, but they're also trying to be better people. Yeah. They're trying to be be, either try to be better at their jobs. They're trying to be better in relationships. They're trying to be a better person to everybody else around about them. And he- their health and fitness journey is going to help them do that. Mm-hmm. So self-development is a massive thing. When I read that, I was like, that's true. Because like... If you were to train really hard and you were to do like a bodybuilding show again, Gillian would never do that way. Mm. But she's still into fitness and she's still into keeping healthy, but she's not into that. But you connect on another level, which is also, but fitness helps you connect to that level. Mm. So by her walking and him doing all his gym stuff and help her in the house, but then they go, right, we want to learn about this, we want to learn about that. So self-development is a massive part in the fitness journey mm. that people come across and they go, right, well, I've actually not been doing that well in my job. I don't even enjoy this job. So, like, I've got a client in the noon. She was like, because I said to her for months, I was like, this job is keeping you up at night. And I was like, you are working for this amount of money is today, today, these hours. I was like, is this worth it for your health? And I kept saying, I was like, I don't think it is. And I was like, you could find another job day, day shift instead of doing back shift, night shift to pay you the same. And I was like, and you, I was like, you just don't have the confidence to do it. And right now, she's like, I have the confidence to do it. Yeah. And they pissed her after a week there. She says, I just packed it in. She says, I'll find an odd job. She says, I'll find an odd day shift job. You're right. Yeah. There's no no worth my point. So by her doing that fitness, she's went on that self-development journey. And I That's think what that, I mean, there's branches of byproducts. Aye, aye. Aye. So I think by the fitness, the self-development comes in. And then when you start self-developing, that's when the real barrier comes in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And you go, this is where I want to go now. I am trying to go on this path. Aye, aye, I'm going to continue to do this. And I think that's what a lot of people do when they're trying to get their health, uh, their partner into health and fitness. When they're trying to get them into health and fitness and try to get them healthy. They just want them to be there. They, just want, they want them to be there on their journey of self-development. Yeah. They, they know, I'm feeling better, I'm doing this, I want them to do this. And, and self-development can look so different. So yeah. You said about bodybuilding, which is quite a good point, because I was selfish to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think you need to be selfish. Mm-hmm. But that, that didn't break me and Jillian up. Me and Jillian were together at this point. And mm-hmm. she trained, but I had a lot. I, I, I kind of had to set expectations at the start. They're like, I've got a lot of cardio to do. I've got, even though this was the wrong way to go about it, go about it completely different now. But as I'm giving up a lot of time that I need to be in that gym. Aye. So we're not going to be seeing each other as much. And I try to communicate that. Could have been better. I actually can't even remember how I even handled that conversation, but she was understanding. Now, if I then became a competitor, and this is why you see a lot of bodybuilders lose their their wives or partners or um, husbands or whatever because when they go into that it's a self it's such a selfish sport Aye. and it's not just you go to your training and you come home it's your diet lifestyle your rest like everything needs to be Pinpoint. especially at that elite level it has Aye. to be very dialed into a t and there's not many people that can kind of stick around for that because in a way if Jillian had to be my my um my partner through that, if I was going to take it to the next level, then she would have to sacrifice her self-development because feel. then she's like, oh, I'm just the, the bodybuilder. Like she loses her identity because in a way, like we can't do both. Aye. We can't be there for both. Like right now she's going through her development way, way work and all that sort of stuff. And there's an element of like selfishness that she needs to take with that. It's like, look, I'm going to be away a wee bit more and all that sort of stuff. And it's yep. like, right, cool. Aye, aye. Like, we're, we're going to go on our path, but we're helping each other out and we need to make sure we find our time to connect and all this sort of stuff. Aye. Um, so, so much even on that topic, but kind of bringing it back to getting your friend, family member, partner into health and fitness. Let's kind of break down a, a few uh, 
which got strategies, I guess, if we call them that. Two seconds to scroll all the way down here. So, we understand, well, it's, it's quite obvious that anything that you look up when it comes to lifting weights, it has a positive impact in your mental state and yep. your energy and your overall feeling. So, that cheesy saying, couples that lift together, stay together, because I guess when you break it down, like, why is it? Well, think about it. If you're both working on something, you've got an opportunity to connect. You've got an opportunity to build together. Aye. But imagine achieving a goal. You ever see those um, couples who are like, like their before and after transformation? It's like oh, us aye. before then after, and then like it shows you their journey and they're failing and all this sort of stuff, and they're, they're so happy, like they're making it a laugh and they're making the experience so much more enjoyable. Yeah, they're the ones that will last stronger in terms of relationship and commitment to the. Aye, because they've been through the hard times as well. Yeah. But the the first kind of thing they've made it enjoyable, aye, aye. and that's really the thing that's overlooked. That you we train clients, and they're fortunate enough that they they pay for a coach, and we can fast track their journey. Aye. But then they there's almost like a bit of naivety that they then go right, come on, you just need to start training full body. And it's like aye, but maybe they just need to start walking outside first. Aye. Maybe they just like let's start small, like find something that you both go. Can we do this this week? I think that's f if you're. Like if your partner isn't into health and fitness, you need to get your message right before you even start to push them in. Yeah. You need to understand why you're pushing them into it. Is it, do you want them to look better? Do you want them to be fitter and healthier? Do you want them to be happier? Do you see that they're doing the dumps? Do you understand them as a full person? Yeah. To be able to give the message across them? Because if you, if, if you go to them for the first time and say, this is why I want you to train, this is how you're going to train or walk or whatever it is, and you give them it wrong, you fucked it. I think you fucked it if you say that to start with, being brutally honest. Because like, well, I've tried to say it, like tell them, try to tell people to, to lift, try to tell people I to. I know, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So I, if, you go with, if you go with the wrong message and you say it in the wrong way, yeah. you fucked it. Yeah. So you need to be very delicate at how you're telling the person or I, I don't even tell them, just say, no, exactly. you're going to walk. Frame, aye, the frame of mind is not pushing, aye, aye. it's pulling. Aye, aye. It's like it goes back to the old like uh, John Maxwell's books on leadership. That's how you lead people. Mm -hmm. Like you ever see the picture with the guy sitting on the throne and he's pointing. He's like, go there, do that, do as I say, type of thing. Aye, aye. And he's like a good leader, and the guy's pulling. The guy's aye, aye. pulling no, the absolutely. rock because he's leading from the front. Absolutely. And that brings us on to the first point. You need to be the example first, right? Aye, aye. So if you you're showing up to these family events, you're showing up to like coming home every night, and you're starting making physical changes that is going to radiate a response that mm -hmm. you probably won't notice to begin with and it's hard when you're when you're on because you're still you get this self-sabotage mode within you and the self-doubt that you're not really on that right path but just that one wee thing like doing that like i don't know like if you're going to a family party and everybody's drinking you're like i'm i'm not going to drink now if you're going to that family party and you're like no i can't drink because i've got a pt i can't i can't i, I, can't, I, can't, I can't you're you're setting up that whole conversation of going Man, that's miserable. Imagine not being able to do that. So that's how, this is a good point. That's a fantastic point. So I've no drank since February and I was going to stag do. And I was like, how don't think I'll be drinking, boys. Don't think I'll be drinking. Uh, just not really any anymore. <coughs> and then I went, no, look, I don't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. That's it. I do not drink anymore. It's no, I can drink. I can drink if I want. But I don't want to. So, and it's no that I don't want to drink at that stag do. I don't drink at all. And by me saying it like that, all right, cool. It's yeah. no. Oh, why are you not drinking? Because no is an answer. It, That's the thing. Like, it's, but it's but when you change it for. Oh, I don't, I don't know, want mate. to. Aye, aye, I don't. I don't do it. It's no. I don't want to. I don't. Do you get me? Yeah. So straight away, when you say I don't do this or I do this, you're owning the decision. You're like, owning the decision. Well, that's what I mean. The, the the conversation's up for debate when it's like, oh man, because then you start thinking. But then the other side, the thing's like, oh man, imagine not being able to drink and all that, and it's like, no, I could drink if I want to drink. Aye. I'm just, I don't, I don't. But it's the same, to. you're you're saying if, if somebody's like, I can't do this because of that, I can't do this. Somebody else is in control mm -hmm. of that decision if you're using the yeah. kind of words. And that's a good strategy when you even like as a as a side note here, you're on your health and fitness and you feel you're faced with the peer pressure all the time. You change that conversation, like, no, nah, I'm okay, I don't want to. Aye. Or no. Like we always feel we need to justify your answer. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And I'm at that stage with, with family now, like anytime we go, so you want to drink, like, no, nah, I'm okay. Aye. And in the first couple of times don't get me wrong it can be hard Aye. because there's a oh what James used to always drink or whatever and it's hard because then you're like oh that's fucking miserable and that's the fucking saddest thing about this whole thing like it's more unhealthy it's you're so you're such 
you're an outcast if you try to work on your health and fitness. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest challenge. Now, I've, flip that in his head to something that's maybe not as black and white, like a takeaway, for example. Aye. You say no in that situation is okay to do. But also, I think, depending where you are with your health and fitness, sometimes that might be... You're just slagging me for getting a Chinese. No, but sometimes that might be the right thing to You're do. You're slagging me in there. No, even on camera. I know. Yeah, he was butchering me for that. Do you know why? Why did you not get that? Because why did you get that? Why did you get that? I go for a fuck all. Go for nothing. Because. banging. I'll tell you because. And I, I still hit my mate, deadlift yesterday. You remember, ev- <laughs> <laughs> you remember everything that we talk about on this is recorded. And there's an episode where you came in and went, I'll never have a Chinese again in my life. You I, said that. You said those words, not me. But what, I, I, I could get it with less MSG and all that. So I was like, okay, I'll try mate. it. Just it's fucking banging. Just speaking Mandarin but, to me. <laughs> <laughs> but see, so going after that, so I remember when I was at a family party and it's the last family party I went to and it's not just because of that, but when you're in this space, right, and you're, well, we're quite understanding eh, how fitness works, how diets work, how behaviours work is the main thing. How behaviours work and how you don't need to go all in to actually be fitter and healthier. Yeah. You can take your time, you can build things up and the main thing the main topic of conversation at this family party was weight loss. Uh, how, how have you lost so much weight? Like, to, to, to one of the family members, and that's all they were talking about. And I was like, I didn't even realise this is what family... And then you go to another one, and they're like, oh, did you see such and such lost the last week? It's a fucking massive topic, right? Mm-hmm. And then they're all going, oh, it's it's intermittent fasting, it's keto and all this. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. See the day, remember I said this, the day I went to my up to my dad's and I came home. Remember how like distraught because I went in and he's like, do you know, the Chinese eat, eat drink a pint of water before every meal and that's <laughs> how they're so lean. And I fucking looked at him and I was like, I'm, Mate, done. I'm done with this. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I have no way of bringing this conversation but, like, We've back. just spoke about how it's weird to start your health and fitness journey, but I, I've, honestly, every family party you go to, weight loss or uh, the gym or some sort of fitness comes into conversation and I think to, 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 what to take from that is no matter how different the path that you might be on with your family members, with your friends, with your, your partner, everyone secretly does want to do something with it. Everybody does. But to your point, if it's all framed around something like weight loss, we know for sure, like it's going shift to the focus to some, something else yeah. and you get much more chance of having it more sustainable. So it's like, right, okay, how do you start bridging the gap? So you're being the example. So you might be the person that's lost tons of weight. So, oh my God, you've lost tons of weight. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Like been been working hard. Oh, you well, you must be restricting your diet. You so you get thrown all the the, the false usual? expectations of Aye. what they have, and it's like, nah. Actually, I'm only I'm only trying to communicate what you're doing, but also have a bit. Of, I think the word that I ha- have humbleness, but also have like a bit of humility that you've probably had your challenges. We've all had their challenges. So if you're going in there going, yeah, fucking, I'm working out three days a week now and I'm dialed in with this. Every day I'm dialed fucking in. You might be at that stage when you're talking to them, but I think try and pull it back and bite your tongue a little bit and talk about the vulnerability that you had. Like, yeah, like I'm at a a, a great stage now when I'm working out three times consistently. But when I started, I struggled to get one day in. Ah, Because that becomes, then you start thinking, very relatable. Aye, because if they, and this is where I've got it wrong, and I don't think I've actually approached this conversation with, with family or, or got to this stage yet. Like, I've always been the guy in the family, like, Dale's the one that goes to the gym five, six days a week. Yeah. Or Dale spends tons of hours in the gym. And that was me early on. But now that I'm a coach, that's probably why they don't listen to this podcast and show, because they're like, oh, it's just talk, talk, talk. When in reality, there's probably a lot of value they're that not I can give it, them they're, now. They're not in it enough to listen to the podcast. Like, I understand that. But they're in it enough to read an article on. I oh, know that's so, very so but that's my point. Like, I, that's that's what I mean they, they are interested, but they will not on one hand I'm the son, right? Mm-hmm. Or on one hand I'm, I'm I don't know I don't think I'm the authoritative fitness figure that they see in the family. Yeah. So when an article comes out, the reason why Chinese people are so lean straight away it captivates their attention. Aye. And I'm throwing that as an example. I was fucking bashing my dad here. Listen, it's no fucking fair. And I'm like him. he's he like he no, gets, but, but this is their generation. They're they're drawn into to titles. Aye, aye. And it's like, oh my God, Weight I, Watchers woman loses sixty pounds in three weeks. I remember at a family party. I nearly blew up Mate, at the shit the so shit they were talking. I was like, as you say, you're holding <laughs> back. And I was like, what are you fucking talking about? And they would be But like, that doesn't do any good then to No, them. no, but I didn't say that. But they're like, what do you think in a man fast? And I was like, fucking shit. I was like, fucking shit, you want to you, you lose weight, don't intermittent fast. 
I was like, you, you, I, but back then I hadn't stabilised the message yet because I think I was only, it was only July, mate, so I'd only been a PT for a month, but I knew what they thought about it was shite. Yeah, that's what I mean, you, your passion can then but, overpower the conversation. But now I'd be able to just go, look, all you would need to do is strength train a couple of times a week and then when they, they'll, they'll hit you with a question or they'll hit you with something and this is, I think, is a great way to get them thinking. They'll go, I'm going to do this and just go, why do you think, why do you think that worked for you? And then straight away they'll start thinking and they'll go, I don't fucking know. Yeah. And you go, it won't work you for this for this reason, but you sh- you could do this at the start. Sometimes they need to learn the lessons themselves. Though, so I, even if a, somebody was saying to me, look, I'm going to start intermittent fasting, we go, cool. Why, why is it you're doing that? Oh, it's for weightless. Cool. Do you think you can you can do that forever? And if the answer is no, then it opens up the discussion. Like, okay, well, why don't we actually think about let's 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 help you? Let's. Aye. What do you think you can do? Mm, I don't know. Like. That's what I was saying yesterday in that video. Like sometimes it could be as easy as so something so drastically easy, like getting up and walking outdoors for five minutes. Because if that kick starts, where you start building momentum and getting into your journey. I mean, as much as I shot my dad down with the fucking cutting out bread and drinking a pint of water, and the reality should have been cool. Give it a try. Aye. But do you think you can do it forever? If if you start there, and then look, let's build. Let's build on just, those habits. Just bring it up, them though, and then by the end of the conversation. They'll go, here, that is actually a lot of shit. Yeah. They'll because, go, aye. well, I, I'd, I'd get why that wouldn't work, right? What, what 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 do you think probably would work? And then you give them something nice and simple to try. Yeah. So, first spot, well, one of the first points, well, we'd say be the example first is kind of where you have to start with. So next, you, like, that is actually a good scenario that um, that individual, like, not pushing them into it, but you're saying, yeah, give it a try. Can I see how you go? It's like, quick. I've dealt with a couple of clients. It's worked for some. It's not worked for others. Because you start re- making it relatable. They're like, okay, okay, I can do this. Because everyone's got that self-doubt at the start. Aye. And it's like, it's no point. Or they compare themselves to other people. And it's like, they are miles ahead of me. What's the point now? So they start doing their thing. But the best thing you can do at the start is make it fun, make it engaging, make it Aye. make it enjoyable. So Aye. you said, you mentioned like doing a sport. Mm-hmm. Have you tried that way? You phoning somebody? Phoning you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so have you d- have you done that? Like, I've actually never tried. I've never done that, but that's one of the things I read, and I was like, you know what? That would actually be, but it would need to be like a nice, simple sport. I but mean, it could be something as simple as it's, I guess as a sport in a way, like going out a hill walk, going out a walk, and ah, aye, aye. like that could be the very that, basis that's taking that's taking walking up a little yeah. level. Some of my clients have played like badminton and. Um, squash and all that with our with our partners and it's a laugh aye, aye. it's not about the fitness and it takes the mind off fuck man I'm burning my problem is, calories my problem is I'm way too competitive, competitive yeah, yeah. No. but you can make that into the relationship so you would that so see if I meet somebody they need to be competitive because I'm going to absolutely obliterate <laughs> everything if, and then I wouldn't enjoy that they wouldn't enjoy it hmm. so I would well, I would want they would be competitive with me Yeah. you think you can beat me well let's fucking go man <laughs> I would love that shit man no, I know, I know. So, so ways in making it fun, like, I don't know, like, I mean, if it was about the gym workout, what'd you do with your dad and your stepmom at the start? Mate, 30 minute workouts, mm. simple movements, Good body, and we movements. would just have a laugh while we're doing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, as a PT, you understand that having a laugh is part of the game. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Once people get to a certain level, you go, right, less laughs probably. It's going to be a bit harder. Mm-hmm. But at the start, man, you just have a laugh. We're doing this. And if they see if they make a fuck up with something, you go, ha you're fucking dafty. Here's how you do it. <laughs> and they'll go, oh, right, right, right. I said, don't worry. Everybody's done that. Mm-hmm. Because everybody has done it. And it's like relating their fuck ups to everybody else's fuck ups. And they yeah. go, oh, daddy. And I'll go, here's a video. I'll always, I've always get videos of me in the bank fucking things up in the aye, gym. Aye. And then they'll laugh. So we'll laugh together. And then it'll be like, right, cool. I'll go, right, so go to it. So you fucked that up. Yeah. And then. You go, you've made something very fucking, sound very, very boring to most people. And you go, that's actually quite fun. And then you go, right, the next bit is like, train yourself, man. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, right, and I was like, see, when you train yourself, just take it easy. I think you might have to be with them for a good wee, good good few months first. Absolutely. Get that routine built. Not even a routine. This, this is actually another good point. Not having a routine, this is probably where not following a program, having an idea what you want to do, but this is where I'd be more lenient. Like, so if I, if we're talking about a relationship and you're got to take your partner in, you've got to scrap the fact that you're even having a workout. You're as not, you. And, and remember, you're, you're not, not working I, out. You're not a PT either. Aye, you're not. Aye, aye. But you're not working out with them that day. 
you're just making sure they, they enjoy this. Yeah. Because if you go in there, you expecting a workout, you'll get frustrated as fuck. You'll tell them, fuck off. I'm not fucking training you again. We've all and, been there, man. And James is speaking for experience here, but see the guys <laughs> out there? See the guys? You're taking, you're trying to get your girlfriend, your wife or whatever it is, and you're trying to bring them, to, maybe even somebody you're talking to, and you bring them down to the gym. Don't show off, right? Mate. She doesn't care how much you squat. Mate. She's nervous as fuck being aye, in there aye. to start with. And if you start showing off and oh, then miss one of your lips and then bang and whatever it is, it doesn't need to be about strength. It's just the f- pure fact of just enjoying it when you're getting in there. Aye. Now, there's going to be levels to this as well because there's a lot of couples and relationships out there where one there's a there's a distortion and expectation around what health and fitness is right that's a that's a separate subject Massive. but it doesn't need to be the gym and it might not be the gym for for some relationships some people just might not be there and it might take them years to eventually get to that stage but if it's something simple now where these are going out walks together and these are doing weekends away of like getting i don't know like a cabin and going out trails way i don't know Whatever it is that you're doing, well, my dad, da- my dad, my, my dad, my stepmom always walked, mm-hmm. always walked, and it was just by me changing my message, going for oh look at my six pack, I'm fucking jacked, I'm fucking hot as fuck. That's generally how I used to speak. It was pure jokingly, but when you get into that space, you realise even if you're jo- no, but even if you're joking, people are taking in what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So if you're like oh I'm hot as fuck, and they're like ha ha ha, that's what the gym is though. Ah, it's vain. That's all it is. Self-obnoxious. Aye, aye. That's why a lot of people go, I don't want to go to the gym with all the bodybuilders. Mm. And people go like to me, oh, you day bodybuilding? I'm go, no. <laughs> don't you ever. I don't you say fucking that. say that. <laughs> but it's like, that is the only perception a lot of people have. So they're like, I am never going to go. So it's like slowly in conversation going, oh, I was, I was strength training the day. I feel I'm really good for it. You know, my, my squat's getting better. Uh, don't say anything about your body. Stop speaking about your body. So that that's one of the points we got down here. Don't think you're a know all and don't kinda look at me type of thing. Aye, aye, aye. Oh look at me, I'm in my health and fitness journey. You don't need to be like see like vegans or you don't need to tell everybody you're doing it. Aye. Being the example of just it'll it'll bring itself out mm-hmm. through your authenticity, I guess if you call aye, it aye. that. And that'll just start happening and it'll come up in conversation. What'd you do? What you been up to this week? Ah, oh, not much. Just work and gym and that. Oh, you going to the gym? Yeah, yeah. I've got I've been consistently going for the last six months. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be. Oh, I'm fucking. I'm smashing it. Because I if- actually know how the bicep inserts to the shoulder now, <laughs> and how the quad. How there's like I know all the uh, names of the four quadriceps. <laughs> See people who are training for a short amount of time go. I know this. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Even if you do, who cares? No, right? but like these. The people who know less think they know more mm. and they push that on people. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, they go, you should be doing this. Yeah. You should be doing that. You should be doing this. So that's a good point. You shouldn't be doing anything, right? No. And I think this is where it, it's hard because you know what works, right? So if, you, if you're listening to this podcast, you, you're very bought into the idea of the power behind lifting weights, yeah. why to do your mobility work and all this sort of stuff. So then you have someone's like, oh, I'm just going to go to Zumba. I might try this Zumba out. It can be so hard because you're biting us. You're like, oh, it's not going to fucking. But it's going, you know what? That's going to work for them. And if that then leads them onto this path, doesn't matter if it's five years down the line, I'd rather that it's something, it's a step in, it's a step in the right direction. Aye. Same goes for, even if it was CrossFit, I know I made the joke last night, like that's like a cult thing that people are getting bought into. It's like, yeah, you can you can go for it, but here's where they can you can start to merge your path because they'll go straight into high intensity and they're like, man, Doing this fucking this is shit. It's, it's fucking hard. It's like this is shit. It says, aye, that's why I don't do it. That's why I only do this. Aye. What? You only you do less? Yeah, yeah. And tell them you found a fantastic podcast that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> Send this to them. <laughs> but you know what BPM. I mean? Like, you start to you start to merge the past because they can now compare what they're doing to what you're doing. Yeah. And that's where they sort of role model and set an example of, you know what, that way looks so much better than what I'm doing just now. I'm gonna jump ship and come over to to your to your path now. Yeah. So, next one. Oh well, we've kind of talked about being the, being the example that ties into that. But the so a, a nice little strategy is inviting them to join you in certain things, whether it's a gym session, a walk, whatever it may be, a fucking bike ride. But do it without any shame behind it. And uh, for them to say no, it's okay. But don't have. I think one thing that we're all guilty of doing is 
will not consistently invite. Aye. So, like, say, if I say to you, do you want to work out today? And you're like, nah, I'm all right. Nah, I can't be arsed, whatever. I'm like, cool. I'm unlikely to ask you again, but that's where most people fail. And as long as, like, if you're consistently going out a walk every night after after dinner, for example, right? You're like, you want to go out a walk tonight? Nah, I can't be bored. Okay, cool. You know, there's no guilt, no shame behind it. It's just like, right, cool. I'm going to go out. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Come back. Because I can tell you, like, Jillian does this, right? She'll go out a walk. And I know the power of walking and all that sort of stuff and how good it is here. But sometimes I'm just like, nah, I can't be bothered. Done. And I sit there and I'm like, man, I should have went at that walk. Yeah. Fuck, that was a good time for me to actually be with her. Blah, 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 blah. And I feel guilty. But then there's other times she's like, do I go out a walk? And I'm like, nah. And she's like, oh. She's done my way, and, I, <laughs> and I'm like, that makes me know why I go walk even more now. Aye, right? aye. See what I mean? Yeah, like, so, thank <laughs> fuck you acted like that, man. Thank no, the fucking lord. I, I've spoke to her about this, and it, it's hard because it's the same when um, I'm so invested in just working on my business now, right? And maybe our family invites her out for for lunch and that, and I'm like, nah, nah, I don't want to go. And if there's guilt associated behind that, and it, it fuels my nah, definitely no doing it now. But if it's like, if it, if I come to the decision myself, I start to play on it a wee bit more and I'm like, you know what, I probably could do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 honestly, I can't, that's probably not communicating this in the best way, but there's something to be said with no shame, no guilt, just, okay, cool, move on. Aye. But you show up enough times of doing that, that will eventually lead to that person wanting to do Aye, it. Right, show them the positives and know the negatives. So the negative would be, oh, fuck's sake, man, I fucking wanted you to come. The positives come back. On well, a- I don't want to come, right? No, the positives come back and going. I was, I, I feel good. I am. I'm going to get up early tomorrow, and you, you get up early tomorrow, and not they're like, well, oh, they're feeling good, but you don't say anything. You don't say anything negative. You don't go. Oh, if you went that walk, you'd feel as good as me. Aye, that's what I mean. The the guilt and the shame part. Nobody. It doesn't work from a PT point of it view. Doesn't work for them. It's never worked for us. And no. there's some PTs out there, and you'll see like you've got fucking twenty four hours in a day, and you should have plenty of time to work it. Some people aren't. Right, some people are like are so emotionally distraught with fucking other things going on in their life. Mm-hmm. It's no, it's not at the forefront of their mind, right? No. So as much as we know, like having information doesn't make you like. It's almost like there's a bit of wisdom behind. Like we're we're more informed than ever, right? Like we talk about family parties and they're talking about weight loss. Aye. They can Google the best way to lose weight. Yeah, and a bajillion articles will come up. They tie into their friends' experience. They tie into like what's going say, on in their life. They would click on the event that hits their insecurity, mm-hmm. like fat loss, weight loss, or this person most. So that's what I mean. We're we're no short of knowledge, but we're short of the wisdom, the the actual right. experience, and the practice that that goes into that. Now let's play the scenario out. We're consistently asking, "Do I come a walk? Do you want to come a walk?" And it's just not working. You're six months down the line every day. You're you're Dumped. saying, "Do you want to do that?" So it goes to your conversation, like hitting the crossroads of having a conversation of saying look I feel like we're drifting apart or like and we're no fucking therapist on relationships or anything here but you need to have a, an expectation and a conversation around look w- most of our arguments have came because I've wanted to do this and you've wanted to do that and it's not that I'm right and you're right uh, so I'm right and you're wrong or I'm wrong and you're right it's just we seem to be on two different paths so mm-hmm. rather than just going right that's it it's maybe like open that discussion up the best thing to do open that discussion up and see where where the family member or the friend or the partner and we're saying where they are I, we, we're saying partners here like sometimes like friends will break part ways because you're on two different paths so I, it's, happened it, to, it's happened to me us? over the last ah, I, I, year fuck I. and it's not that I'm not friends with a lot of people anymore it's just like cool we'll catch up whenever but there's no I'm not like oh man he's a dick he doesn't he nah, he's, he's not interested in we just get different different um, it's nothing like that it's just thanks. like we're just on a different path I'm enjoying what I'm doing and you're enjoying what you're doing but it's not the same thing anymore but it's not the same thing anymore yeah yeah we're, we're not doing the same things anymore yeah. do you know what I mean so it's like most people's friends group will change then you've got a different friend group when you're 18 to when you're 25 to when you're 30 aye when you're but when you what you got to look at it is when you're in a relationship though and it's like that oh, your mate aye it's different it can't it, it can't be like that no I know because you can't say I'll see, I'll see you in a month mate <laughs> do you know what I mean I it's like just cohabbing with somebody <laughs> <laughs> it's like we need to see each other you every day that like about, uh, <laughs> I'll see you next month <laughs> that, that's it that's it and, uh, that's the hardest thing about being in a relationship because you could be six months into one could be five years into one could be ten years into one 
and you're then realizing that man i'm trying to better myself and this person doesn't seem interested mm -hmm. in me better than myself right. and sometimes it's always the fact that it's no sometimes it's always down to lack of communication on like why you're doing it and i think communicating that why if you're with a person who, who truly loves you and is interested in you then they'll respect what you're trying to do and there'll be a com there'll be compromise they'll say I, I, look i don't want to go to the box way they'll sit you down and go i don't want to go to the box way i feel all right myself i'm happy that you're doing it though and keep doing it because you're feeling better yeah but I, if it's like if it's like a, a genuine he butt heads then you need to do two things obviously as i said have a conversation with other person let them know how it true how important that is to you but don't say you need to do it. Just let them hear the answer. Right. Hear right. their answer and take it for there. But then you got to ask yourself, why would you even want them to do it? Like, what is your purpose mm -hmm. behind it? Mm -hmm. And find, make sure it's the proper purpose. Like, because it could be from a place of sheer insecurity for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's you, a fair point. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? You could be feeling so insecure in yourself that you think they're feeling so insecure in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't want them to feel they need to do this because... I, uh, because they must be insecure because I was insecure. Yeah. No, I'm trained. I don't feel insecure. But some people just aren't overly insecure to start with. So some people can only go to their work. They might have a slightly physical job. They can come home and they can feel good. I think eating is probably one of the biggest things though. Yeah, because I, I think I, I'm thinking of the conversation where the, if it's me, for example, I've had to say to John, look, if you're going to buy chocolate, you're going to buy the soft bake bars. Can you hide them from me? Because <laughs> my self-control mm -hmm. just isn't there. Mm -hmm. And if she's not in her health, and she's like, no, just fucking have, you, just have me self control, and then it becomes a big argument, right? Aye, aye. But what she does is like, yeah, no problem, and she hides them, and then I find them, and I'm like, you're gonna need to hide them again, aye. and we're fucking playing this game where we're moving fucking chocolate about the house. But a lot of people that if we take away the Friday uh, Friday night takeaway, it's a very common thing that you see in the UK and aye. in Scotland in particular, and. I can see it with some of my clients, and I can see they feel they feel guilty talking to me about it, and I'm like, look. It's cool if you want to have it on a Friday night. It's like, no, but I don't want to have it. I'm like, well, you need to communicate that to your to your partner. Mm. And if you don't feel that that you've not got the willpower to 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 for them to have it and you to say no, that's also okay. But you need to communicate that. That's maybe the way. And it's like saying, no, you can't have a Chinese because I'm on my health and fitness journey. I hear that all the time. I'm like, no, like that's the wrong way to go about it. What you should be saying is, like, I don't have the self control to not be. Uh, it's me. Indulge. Uh, it's, it's the me. person it's, saying it's, it's on me. me. Can can you help me with this? If you're going to have it, can can we have a compromise where you don't tell me about it, or you just order a smaller portion, or whatever it may be? Yeah. Um, and I think if it, if you're in a good relationship, that person's like, you know what? I don't probably need this now. If I'm going to have it, I'll just I'll find a way around it. Work. I don't know what the answer is to to work around that, but nine times out of ten, the 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 person you're with is like. Nah, you know what? That's cool. I can I can find something. I think else. I'll say semi compromises. Look, I get you. I want a Chinese, but I'll help you cook your meal. So that brings us on to a point I actually didn't even write down. Cooking is interesting, isn't it? Right? Mm. We all fucking see it as a chore. No. And it's always this kind of thing. But that's uh, a fantastic compromise though. But it's also a time to it's an activity. Aye. It's a just for fun. Aye. It's like, oh, let's look up a fake away. Let's look up like there's so many food pages. Um Michael Fitness, like his is hilarious. He oh, puts man. so much is it Mitch Fitness? Mitch, Mitch Food Fitness. Mitch Food and Fitness. Aye, Mitch Food and Fitness on Instagram. He is fucking hilarious Aye. and he makes you bring so much humour to it. And his meals are banging. And I found myself making something. And I was like, yeah, like shit hot. I've not tried them yet, to no. be fair. To be fair. So as much as yes, like that Friday night is usually with down tools from the week of work and all this sort of stuff, it becomes the weekend. But doesn't it need to be a write off when it comes to your nutrition? No, because it's like you want to try and make this meal. I like make something that's like you, you send each other a meal and you go, "Why try this?" Right? You go and get all this stuff. So Wannies does all the groundwork. Becomes a date night. Aye, the other Wannies goes and gets all the food. Right, we'll make it together, and you sit, and you have a laugh, and you connect like no other. And like day nights are fucking great, mm -hmm. but even then, if they still want to get a takeaway, like look, help me cook this wee meal then, and I can have good food, mm -hmm. and we can both have a good dinner together, and you get your food and I get my food. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like that's a compromise that they're still getting what they want, you're still getting what you want, and you can't say to them, you can't have that fucking Chinese. Yeah, you can see why it wouldn't work going into. You can see the kind of it'd be very it's, fucking difficult. That's what I mean. Like, I find it hard to even give you an, give you an answer. <laughs> Because even in that scenario, it feels weird and it probably will be weird. 
but just knowing if you are both happy with that then that's cool I think also if you were to do anything like that you got to understand that the motive is just to keep each other happy not to try and get them to do your side or do you them they, uh, they, need, they need to make the decision for themselves I know but you're not trying to get them to eat healthier and you're, they're not trying to get you to eat Chinese or whatever it is right I'm saying Chinese but they're not trying like you're just doing it because they want that and you want that and yeah. you want to try and combine but that is fucking hard like if, I think if you've seen somebody eat shite like I've got family members right now have a terrible diet and I struggle to have a conversation with them because one of the first things they do is bring up diet. Do you know what I mean? They're like, I'm doing this. I'm like, I generally do not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. I do not give a fuck because yeah. if I have a conversation with you, you're not going to listen to anything I tell you. I don't want to tell you anything, but you're going to ask me things anyway. And then we have a conversation, you don't listen to anything I say. So I'm like, this is just a pointless conversation and mm -hmm. we always get into the same conversation. And I'm going to go, look. Day 30 quid for a consultation call. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> day what you fucking want. Because I do not care and that's not I'm not saying that I've had it I genuinely don't like as soon as you give somebody one bit of advice once it because they need to ask for it first yeah do you know what I mean they need to go look but see with, see with that see those individuals that you're talking about it sounds like you're maybe at the past the point where you're like that's that I can't help you anymore oh no no so but this is what I mean there's, there's people who will be listening to this who are probably already at that point and that's a, that's a great point say look you just need to draw a line in the sand so going look it's just there's no right or wrong diet. I'm not a coach. Maybe get a coach. That might be the answer that you need so to give So I was, I was, we didn't get this done. So you shouldn't be trying to teach your yeah, partner. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think you should be trying to encourage them. Encourage them to get a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is what I think the way to go is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Fuck trying to teach your partner. No, it's, you're not You're not there to teach them how to lift, but you can encourage them to, encourage them to get start walking and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, oh, I, I'd love to get into the gym. It's like, well, you can come with me. You can join in my workouts. And you see them lift and you're like, here, I, I didn't know how to do squats, so I've done X, Y, and Z. Aye, get the oh, get a coach. Like, be, getting a coach is probably an episode we need to, we need to do again. Like, Aye. some of the, because even I do think back to it and, as much as I've I've had a coach and I've followed plans and all this sort of stuff, it's definitely one of the things that I take for granted. It's like that's why I've got so much experience and wisdom to apply to my clients because oh, I've got, got a coach. But th that didn't give me the right to coach clients. No, just because I was in the fitness space, so I still had to go. That's through. what I'm saying. People have been going to the gym for six months, followed all the mini program, went right. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to teach my my significant other because I've listened to some people in the gym mm. and then you give them the worst advice ever and you fuck their relationship with fitness forever mm. that's that's probably one of the biggest Aye. issues because both me and you as much as what two combined three years of experience of of PT and well maybe four or five years but putting years our full effort in it but, but like that's making I mean, the sure last, we understand last, our clients the last ten years has been it's a student of the game. We're learning. We're reading. We're so constantly challenging our perspective. Our perspectives have changed, and that's another thing as well. Our perspective has changed so, big time. Last point in this: you do all these things, it may not work. Yeah. And I think that's bye bye. That is hard. It's hard to get because if it's if it's a relationship, it's hard, right? Because you're 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 coming to the crossroads. It's a big argument. Whatever, whatever it end up mean, it doesn't need to be. But you move on, and then you're like, "Fuck, man, I'm." Single, I'm a Pringle. <laughs> I'm not ready to mingle or whatever. Nah, no but see, when it's a family member, that's that's. I'd probably say that would be harder because it's someone that you don't get to choose. They're almost in your life, mm. but they don't have to be in your life as well. Just like some with some friends as well, it can be hard because it's like, oh, we've been friends forever, and just because you're on your health and fitness means we can't be pals anymore. It's not that. It's like you just. Need, it's almost a communication piece again. So. If it's your partner, you're sitting down and saying, look, I, I'm on this path and I don't think you're, we're on the same path here because whatever it is, this a complex talk itself. If it's with a friend or a family member, it's like, look, you keep asking for advice here and you keep wondering what I'm doing. And every time I'm here, I'm guilted and I'm shamed for doing what I'm doing. I can't keep doing this anymore. I love you, but this is it. I need to do my own thing with this. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's a hard, it's, it's a hard thing to, to do. It's very hard. It's very hard. But if you're a man and you're not going to the gym and your missus gets a PT, game over, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How? Huh? How? Because if she's going to, like, uh, you know what I mean? No. That was a wee joke. That was a wee joke. I don't know what you mean, though. I mean, like, the the wives that go to PTs and the cheat. Oh, do you think that? Aye, aye. That happens all the time. I've got clients where their, their mans don't go to the gym. Well, 
it's, it's time still coming. <laughs> Shut up. No, I would I would like to see the statistics, the statistics for that though. Nah, I that's a bigger you... hang than people think. I think you've been scarred in the past, mate. <laughs> no, that <laughs> wasn't anything like that anyway. No, I know, but I, I, I see I, I see it all the time, mate. No, nah, but that's what I, I mean. See it, it doesn't a lot. it doesn't mean so I've got clients who their partners don't go to the gym, right? But they're active. They walk. Active so that's, jobs and so that. that's see, what I mean. Being active is being active is no, no like we. Are, I don't really think we're aiming at that. We have people who aren't active at all. Oh, yeah. They'll go to work. They'll come in for work. They fuck all. Mm. That's the relationships that are on thin ice. As soon as somebody starts a fitness journey, somebody does it mm. straight away. Because being active has gone. They're shown that they're committed to their health. Do you know what I mean? They know that their mental and physical health depends on moving. Do you know what I mean? They're not just going to walk for the sake of going to walk. They're going to walk because they know it makes them feel better. Yeah. Whereas there's a lot of people out there, and it's getting made in there, the mere poor quality food you eat, the less you do, spiral. the less you move so consistently. That's the kind of people we're looking at there. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I, if their husband's like, my dad and my stepmother, they walked for ages. They were always fitter than most people their age. Always were. But as, like we say, did, like when you were speaking about at the start, who who was that? She's over seventy. Um, uh, step nine. Aye. So she, you're just saying the last miss, the pe- the missing piece of the puzzle for her is to build muscle. Mm-hmm. That that was the same for them. I was like, "Tim, you need to start building muscle." But at the same time, they were like, "Right, we come here for work. We go a walk because it's good for us, right?" But they did, they didn't know how to do anything else. Mm. So if if their partners are active, then that's fine. Do you know what I mean? But also with that, like, you sitting down and going, you need to lift, you need to lift, wasn't it working? That message wasn't it working no, with you no. and your dad. But when then happened is your dad's back. So it's like, actually, th- you, you changed it. You actually said in the podcast, she was like, I think if you'd done some lifting weights, your back wouldn't be sore. So he tied it to something that he wants now. And he said, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Who do I know that I can I can do that? He already had a relationship with you. If you weren't in your, your uh, dad's life as a coach, yeah. I don't think he would reach out to, to a coach, you know what I mean? I don't think he would have at that point. Absolutely he, no. He's, it's almost oblivious to what could So I've got a him. consultation with my, my barber coming up, and uh, same thing, he loves golf. And I was like, mate, do you, how, how good are you at golf? He's like, I'm quite good, I'm quite good. Do you know I think it'd be better to be better at golf? And I was like, well, see if you have to wait, it's me, you'd be better at golf. And then when I went in the other day, he was speaking to the guy before me, and he was like, "This guy is going to get me better at golf, talk about me." Yeah, so you've tied it to something you something you enjoy. And he was like, to the other guy, he was like, "Aye, aye." I'm, he was like talking about it, and he was like, "Aye, if you get stronger, you get better at golf." So this other guy said to him, "So straight away, he tied something that he fucking loves already. I'll get better at that." Aye. And he might, might not like lifting weights. Aye. And let's be honest, there's people who don't like lifting weights, but they like the benefit they get from it. Exactly. More, and that's the overpower. So I, as soon as you put something, I love this, this would make me better, and lifting weights would make you better at so many fucking things. Make you better at fucking shagging anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if, if but we, it's fucking true, innit? Well, right, like, let's, aye. Like, innit? Aye, we talk about that all the time. We, we do. We, yeah, aye, it's been a bit, while since I, we've done an episode. If you're good at hip thrust, man, you get a better motion of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying some outrageous stuff, yeah? It's like you fucking flipped a switch in the back half of this episode. No, I know, no. So, but, takeaways, if you're a woman and your man doesn't work out, you're gonna cheat. <laughs> if you're, I I disagree with that. I think you've you've, you've had some fucking mad people. No, I see all the time, mate. Mind you I work, see it all the time, but mind I work at a commercial gym now. Aye, but that does what? Don't blanket statement. Fucking everybody, with it. No, not everybody, but it's a lot. You've got clients with their partners, didn't they? Um, work it. Aye, you try to say they cheated on you. No, <laughs> right, exactly. No, I don't mean just. I mean in general, it's like a bigger common occurrence than people think. And I'm just saying, I you saying t- cheat with a PT? No, no, just cheat. Right, they do, they do, they do. I, I mean, guys as well, guys as well do it. But it's, it's see when you see it in a gym, I see it a lot. Their partner doesn't work out, doesn't they? Fuck all. Right. And sitting down, fuck all, is a bigger common occurrence now than it ever has been. Yeah, because it's normal. It's very easy to do as well. It's very easy to get a takeaway. Oh. I take away deliver TV. Boop. Bang, right, I'm going to do this every Saturday. Aye, see the point you're raising, though? It, as much as we're, it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Aye, it's a bit of a joke. The, but the reason behind it is you're working on yourself, your appearance is changing, your energy's changing, and almost your attraction is changing in a Aye. way. Because you're, there is, like I said, like one of the 
one of the things I'm attracted to and Jillian is her working on her, her when she was up speaking on stage. Right. She absolutely attracted to her physically, but that wasn't something that was physical. That was nah. something I'm, I'm attracted to that. So being in a gym environment, you're changing who you are and you start, like you said, the person that you meet has to be, has to, the person that you are going to be with for the rest of your life has to have an interest in health and fitness, Aye. has to be interested in lifting weights, probably has to be interested in lifting heavy as well. Mm -hmm. Or gets to that stage, right? Aye, they do. They do because they do. that's attractive. Aye, that's aye. attracted to you. So it's no saying that people are bad and they cheat. It's just their attraction changing. We're fucking shit human beings at communicating that. Aye, and it's because in it, in one hand, we're saying you get to the crossroads, you sit down, and you you have that difficult conversation with your partner. But we hate doing difficult shit. So what's the easy option? When I'm talking I'm about gonna, that, I see it quite a lot. And I do. I do, I do, generally do see it, and it's a shit thing to do. But, at the end but of it's the day, easier than having the conversation. It's easier than having the conversation. And the reason you're fucking losing that attraction in the first place is because you're not having the conversation. Mm -hmm. So straight away, you're already shy to have communicating. Mm -hmm. And then they do shy things like that to make it even worse. But it happens on a fucking high Aye. level. No, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's, I was I was thinking you were saying that your clients will cheat with the PT. And I was like, what are you talking no, about? No, no, but they'll cheat with somebody who's in the gym. No, I get it's that. Vet, Aye. And Aye. I know loads of people that's happened to them. That's why PTs get a sleazy name, actually, as well. They do. Aye. They do. And then I think that's a lot, I, I, no even hang with that, but if a PT markets a markets sell like that, they'll get the people like that. Like about If they market a sell about aye, aye, right. pure, do you know what I mean? They'll get that. But I see it all the time and I go, fuck man, that person's got a missus or that person's got a man. And you, you see them and then you, you hear like, you'll hear like, you, aye, the stories, stories go about all the time. And it's like, aye, their man's not really into it. And they've been getting right into it and they've changed. And they're obviously a shitty person for doing that. But it's, it comes into the core dynamic of they've went right into their fitness journey, they've started loving it, and the other person's no. And it's pro it's a bigger breaker up than people think. No, yeah, hi. Yeah. I said on. that I said that right it's No, you're, right. you're spot you are spot on. Because we were saying, oh, just have the conversation. Aye. But then the whole dynamic of that conversation is hard to do. Aye. It might come out of the blue because your partner might think everything's all great so this is, this and is, wonderful. Aye, this is one. Aye, aye they may be like, because they're oblivious. They're the like, best oh, that's ever. cool. You're working on yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm getting my takeaway or whatever it is that they're doing. Doesn't make them up. But that's what I mean. They're no right or wrong for no, being no, in no, that no. situation. It's just change. who they are. They're happy just with change. their life. Mm -hmm. And it's, they think, oh, we're together. And if you make it prominent that, like, look, I'm, I'm not happy in this relationship because of X, Y, and Z. They may change, Aye. but you're not giving that person the time to change. If and you're you not there off. to change them either, in another ship. Mm. No, you're not. You're no. You're no there to change them. You but say, you will you change say to them, together. Yeah, you say to them, and if you don't change, then probably not right because you're you're never there to change them. No, you're not. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but the, I think one of the hardest things. I I don't feel like a guy would take it as personally as a woman would take it what? if you had that conversation with him. Like if you're like, look, oh, you're not showing up to guns and hair. You're a bit fat. <laughs> no, but do you know? But it still would come across that. Like, well, that, that, but that's what I mean. Like, do you know what I mean? I so back to your point, like pushing them into the conversation. That's where if you pull them in, it's like it's not aye, going aye, like, aye, aye. oh, I hear. You need to watch putting that relationship. Wait, imagine on, you, know you say, I mean? by the way, I've got your coach for Christmas. <laughs> but then I'm fat. This is where there's some brutal conversations that goes on. Remember, I was saying at this family party was at a couple of months ago, and. Uh, or the older people was like it was, I was the PT and the guys were saying here can you get this fat so they're the same fat bitch but it's like can you mate, get this fat in, know. in the gym I'm like look at you mate Aye. why don't you do something see that's do you know the weird thing and when you look at it and you look at family situations and everybody calls herself fat 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 right we are sitting here in good shape I would never call MD you're like a fat bastard no, I know. you're a fat bastard I know. and reason is because we know how damaging it is I know. and that's why the reason why they stay Talks in that it. dynamic because they're so like you're a fat bastard you're a fat bastard well you're a fat bastard it's like, I'm you, a, I, like, so it's like we're all I, that's what i mean like uh, that, that's a whole other conversation itself but but if you're in a relationship do not call each other fat yeah. do not call each other lazy oh depends how lazy you are but instead of calling somebody a lazy cunt or a fat cunt just say look here look uh, why don't you try this Aye, it's not, it's, it's, that's why if you're the example first, Aye. in a way you start to pull that in because they start seeing you change and it's like, oh, I can't be bothered. And it's like, I've got so much energy. It's like, why have you, I don't know. Like, I honestly think going out a walk is giving me so much energy. Aye, aye. Boom, they're like, mm, maybe, nah, I can't I, try I, I, that. I would want more energy. So, aye, it's like you start, pulling them into the conversations that whole leadership mentality it's not going you're fat you need to do something about it Andy Elliot if you don't get a six pack aye, fucking aye, that's aye. what it is but you know what I mean like it's 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 on the same cards as that 
such a hard uh, such a hard conversation to have when you actually speak about like oh fucking hell so many dynamics and Aye. layers to it but that's why i think it was a great episode to talk about because it's not talked about enough no and as pts it's no your it's also no your job to talk about it as well it's hard it's hard because it, it comes up in conversation sometimes Dude. and like you said you're like man I don't, this, is, this isn't my place to say and that's why i was like let's do it from a broad topic Go, going back to it. the controversial topic right so obviously you see people moving on, cheating, etc. quite a lot because they, they're hanging these day change. They cheat because they're shite communicators. Do you know what I mean? And you can say they're shite people, but I'll just we'll say shite communicators. I don't think that's just that, though. I think there's also the dynamic of the, the relationship. They start changing, right? They mm-hmm. start getting more energy, start looking better. Well, what I was going, that's what I was going to say. A lot of things that come for lifting weights and that is your sex drive will improve. So the sex, the sex drive improves. Your attractiveness will improve. Yeah, but who's giving them compliments? Other people. That's what I mean. So aye, aye, aye. there's an attention factor that then aye, 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 the aye. relationship's on its on its arse in a way because, like, if, if there's one one way I can get Jillian turned on, right? Honestly speaking, <laughs> it's nobody going. It's no, no just expecting it. There's aye. almost like a wee bit of foreplay from the sense of here. Fucking, you were you were amazing on that stage. Ah, like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah. There's a whole component in that relationship that that we guys we're fucking cavemen, right? We bump into something like, oh fuck, I've got an erection. Like, Aye, so, I suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> but with women, it's a whole different ball game. Aye, it's, there's a, what, words of affirmation. <laughs> absolutely, mate. Nah, like, yeah, yeah. Aye, a, acts of service. Exactly. So it's like, well, that guy hold the door. here. You've been killing it in the gym. So like, I'm attracted to him now. Ah, yeah, and it's. It's weird to talk about, but it's we forget that as men, right? Yeah. And some guys like, how come you're not up for it? I said, like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I don't, and I, I've went through this. I mean, like, she won't mind me talking about this, but I've I've had that where it's just as a guy, it's like, why well, you know, attracted me? And it's like, you've just came in for work. You've no spoke to me. You've no asked aye, me how aye, my day is. Off. You've no end. You've not shown Piss- any interest in me aye, whatsoever. Aye. And I'm like, holy fuck, you're right. Ah, yeah. Let me change that, right? But that that is also another downside. Of, uh, the relationship and when you say guys is when you say girls working on the health fitness to guys the guys is going to miss that nine times out of ten mm-hmm. so if you're a guy if, or you know of a guy sitting there then you need that, to be that's, you need to be present how doing. you need to be present ah, yeah. you need to be saying oh here look you're smashing that no no saying your ass is banging <laughs> it's <laughs> no that no it's not it's like here you're doing you're doing great ah, keep yeah, up the you, good work you, you're, you're, that you're, you're looking you're looking happier like, mm-hmm. keep up you know I just, what I mean? I Things like that are fucking so much better than going, your ass is banging. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. Because all guys think the same. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and I was like, all guys think the same way. It's it, just pure appearance. Pure appearance. Obviously, it does come down to it at the start, but it's starting to go, oh, that's a nice looking girl. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was actually saying that. We're cavemen, mate. mate. We're absolute cavemen. But I, I can't even mind what my actual point was to that before I mean, but I, it was like, your your attractiveness changes and your sex drive changes. But your sex drive changes because your mood changes because your overall mood is higher. Mm. Do you know is what I mean? Is something that like when girls come off the pill, their the attractiveness change because of the, different people. Not even at that, like they they can just the thing that turns them on or the thing that they're like hormonally attracted to changes. changes. Aye, and if you've been on the pill for ten years and you've been with somebody for ten years, they Don't come, come off the pill, they might they might not like you anymore. Fuck man. That'd be scary. But I think that, that probably plays into the, the hormonal parts as well. That's what I was going to say. As soon as you start changing, your hormones change and you see things differently. And for them out there like who's trying to get their partners to change, just try and convince them how good it can make you feel and how good you are feeling as like you've said, like leading by example is the key but just tell them how good it makes the, you, you feel yeah. and just consistently do it and they will if because I, I don't really see how anybody would wouldn't they want to do it no no in some form see now that I'm right into it and my dad and that are right into it and I'm like they're the last people that I thought would be lifting weights do you know what I mean and my barber mate I was like I didn't I wasn't even trying to convert him I wasn't even trying to convert my so dad there, that. there's there's the the missing piece you're not trying to do Aye. it and it happens I wasn't trying to convert my dad just that. like if you don't focus on losing weight it happens I genuinely wanted my dad to know have an injury I didn't even want him to come to me mm. I says here look here's a plan to go to such and such gym and then they were like oh fucking son's a PT and doesn't even take me to the gym I was like I didn't even know you wanted me to fucking take you to the gym uh, he's like you never fucking asked that's what I mean if you invite as well uh, uh, aye, like, aye. you might think like it's, it's, it's hard to ask to, for help aye. it's the hardest step and I always say that in every consultation I was like you've made the hardest decision 
whether you go with me today or not, the step that you're taking, like I'm well done. I'm, aye, I'm aye. honestly proud aye, of you. Aye. I don't care if you go with me, but this is the hardest thing that you're going to do, or one of the hardest things you're going to do. Next thing we'll be starting on blah 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 blah. As soon as they start, they're in. Yeah. But if they're starting for the, if they're starting for you, so that I did read this on Reddit and I was like, this is fucking true. She said her man was a fitness freak and she wasn't really that into it. And then she was gone and he was like, you're not really that happy doing it. And she was like, no, it's all right. And he, he was like, well, because he loves I, it. I only want you to start doing it when you're doing it for you and you love it. Mm. And she was like, fuck this cunt. Do you know what I mean? And that's if you start it for it. So she was starting it for him. So if you start it for your partner, if your partner starts it for you, it's going to fail. Your partner needs to say to you one day, I want to try this. I right, pulled. And then you go and you take them, you take it easy mm -hmm. and you build them in and they'll never stop as long as they're starting for the right reasons yeah. and you don't fucking put them in a CrossFit class. No. <laughs> Do you know what I'm Don't do CrossFit. No, I don't <laughs> start with CrossFit. Right, I think that was a good, a good, aye, aye. A good episode. Absolutely. Kind of a, a different side that you wouldn't really think about, but hopefully it gives you something to take away and, and carry over into your own lives and that sort of stuff. We're probably going to have a... So, hi, cheers, Dale, for, or, or cheers, cheers, guys, for fucking talking about that. I've just split up with my, with my partner. <laughs> well, that wasn't the goal of the podcast, but, but it's something that is almost like a taboo topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, this episode, share it with your friends, share it with your family. I'd probably say if you're going to start somewhere, start with a free plan. That's probably a good, a good, the free plan. I get, get them, get it sent over to them or whatever it is. Don't need to do all the exercises on it. Do that once every two weeks. Just get them starting, get them moving, get them drinking water. Like we've got, in fact, we done an episode on beginners. That might be a good deep dive one because we can follow up with that. The beginner lifters. I uh, like what to do when you're a beginner lifter, mm -hmm. how to start your health and fitness journey or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. that'll be a great follow up episode to this. Mm -hmm. So as always, you know where to find us. You find us on Instagram at Bulletproof Mindset. It got fucking blocked yesterday. Did you see that? No. The page you just get, oh, we were suspicious activity we're closing your account down i was like are you fuck, fucking challenge that i know i just put a post on it and they took the post down uh, but anyway bulletproof mindset underscore underscore uh you find us on youtube subscribe leave a uh, review all that good stuff and if you want to message us you can find us on instagram you can find me at coach crosser find me at james mcginty pt and until next time have a nice one straight into it i can have you first all right, I've got